thinking sideways. I don't understand. Does not compute. You never know. Insufficient data to formulate a reply. What? Stories of things we simply don't know the answer to. Hey everyone, it's Thinking Sideways the podcast. I'm Devin, joined per usual by Joe and Steve. Today we're going to talk about a mystery. If you follow us on Twitter, you may have a little spoilers about this one. Uh, we are going to talk about the Denver Airport, DIA, Denver International Airport. It's tech. Mm-hmm. The technical code for it is DEN, but everybody calls it DIA. That kind of makes yeah. sense. Dead in arrival or something like that. No. Yeah. But yeah, DEA. Yeah, that makes sense. DIA. Denver International Airport. Airport. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Exactly. And before we get too far, this was a suggestion by actually a lot of people. And I don't have everybody's name written down. Everybody suggested different things. Pretty much what would happen is somebody would say, oh, has somebody be su- anybody suggested the Denver airport to you? And I would say, oh, that it's this thing. And they would say, no, it's this other thing. And it's like, <laughs> okay. Like... So I guess we'll do a show about it. Yeah, that's about time. And just so everybody knows, I traveled for this episode. She did she field did. research. I did field she research. Did. I went to Denver International Airport. She found a hidden door. I did. Managed to pick the lock. Uh-huh. Found many, many underground passages. Mm-hmm. Uh, some some like, like sort of culty kind of devil worshiping yeah. altars that had blood all over them and mm-hmm, stuff mm-hmm. you know yeah some guys that had like horns and yeah. weird alien shaped faces yeah or no. you ate at the mcdonald's in the airport and, and got around, really bad pictures. food poisoning yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no but i especially like when we found that that those giant crests on that huge room that had that, that the, the crest that said nwo and had a giant eye imposed on the yeah, top yeah that was pretty good that yeah. was good research I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or Risky. creative writing. One of the two. Whichever. Yeah. Same thing. All right. Well, what we, let's, let's tell these people what's going on with the okay. Denver airport. Let's talk a about lot. Denver a little bit. Well, not Denver, but the Denver airport. The greater Denver area was served by Stapleton International Airport until 1995 which I think make, makes DIA one of the newer airports in America. Uh, but there, I think so. It's a lot of research to do, just so you know. you There's no list I could find on the internet that was, you know, I googled list of airports in America by year built, and it wouldn't, it came with nothing. So mm-hmm. I, I didn't look too far into it, but... Yeah, I, I didn't bother looking into it either. I, it I, is I, one of the newer. Let's I just can't call think, it that. Yeah, I, I can't really think of one that's been built since then, but, you know, maybe somewhere. Initially, the DIA, Denver Airport, was meant to open on October 29th, 1993. But it turns out the project wasn't super well planned, and some <laughs> of the airports that were meant to hub out of there changed their requirements. Oh, and also there was this automated baggage system that was kind of a problem. Mm. So, that thing was awesome. Yeah. yeah. So the project was pushed back a few months, then a few months more, then a strike happened. <laughs> so they pushed the project back to May 15th, two, uh, not 2000, 1994. In April of that year, some reporters were given a sneak peek at this hotly anticipated automated baggage system, which apparently no one had tested, I guess, because if they had, I'm sure they wouldn't have let the media uh, in. They, they maybe, I think they tested it, but not with actual baggage. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I don't know why somebody said, yeah, let's bring the media in here. But <laughs> when they did, reporters, well, reported that clothes and personal items were strewn under the track system and that the parts of the system that were meant to transport luggage were actually just dumping the bags right off the system entirely. In other words, it's kind of like how they handle your baggage now. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) except for it's not people, it's machines doing it. Machines will do the same abuse of your luggage for a lot cheaper. (laughs) Which is great. It's a giant conveyor system, but if I remember watching it, Basically, there was little actuator arms that would shove the baggage based on what it figured out where it was supposed to go mm-hmm. onto conveyor A or B. Unfortunately, they were too they, powerful. They were extremely <laughs> overcharged. <laughs> <laughs> and it would hit grandma's luggage and send all of her clothes 20 feet in the air. So, because of that, the May 15th, 1994 open date was once again pushed back and finally on february 28th 1995 dia was opened which was 18 months after the initial date set oh and fun fact it was about uh two billion yes with a b 
dollars over budget. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one big. I wonder how much. That's the, a uh, near miss. I wonder how much the baggage system cost. It was actually one of the more expensive parts of the airport. I bet. Uh, what, do, do you remember, Devin? What was the the total cost of this airport? I, I I remember reading it, but I can't think of it off of my mind. But I I'd have to say. At least a third of their cost, at least in my mind, and I could be wrong, was that stupid baggage system because they kept mm-hmm. trying to fix it. Well, yeah. I think that if you factor in the fact that it is what kept pushing the date back, the opening date back, I think they estimated that every day they delayed opening the airport cost them $1 million. Yeah. So if you mm. factor that into the, quote, overall cost of the automatic baggage system, which you should, yes. it was absolutely yeah. the most expensive part <laughs> of the that. entire project. Yeah, yeah. Although, I mean, you know, and part of it, of course, was building the tunnels for all the automatic, automated stuff to exist in. And maybe they could mm. retrieve some of their sunk costs by clearing the, the equipment out of the tunnels and use the tunnels for something else. Mm. Maybe. Like, maybe. Like maybe, you know, secret government installations. <laughs> yeah. Yes, oh, maybe. Sorry, sorry. Stop giving away, yeah. Joe. There, so there's a whole mess of things surrounding this place, as we kind of mentioned earlier. So we'll just jump in. I just want to start off, I guess, by saying that right off the bat, there are a lot of things about the Denver airport that I think taken alone are pretty innocuous. You know, there's some art, there's some other stuff. And if they all existed just one thing at one airport and another weird thing at another airport, I would be way more willing to say, yeah, no, that's totally, in- I mean, it's a little weird, but it's totally innocent. But when you kind of take it all, you take a step back and take it all in, in this one building, things get a little fun. Well, and, no. and the nice, the thing that you got to point out to people is I, I've been to the Denver airport. I was there, I don't know, 10 years ago or something. I had no idea. And I probably saw one of the things that we're going to talk about and would have never guessed that there was so much hubbub surrounding it all. Yeah. Because so many things are innocuous on their own. Yeah. Yeah. I I too have been there, and I I didn't notice anything out of sorts either, but I didn't actually spend a lot of time in the airport, so. I spent it in the the airport bar. I didn't have time. I didn't have time to go, like, see that huge mural with the creepy Nazi with the AK towering over the (laughs) table. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Uh, We're going to just attack this line item style. Okay. Ah. So we'll just start with the horse. So each of these, in other words, is a, a discrete mystery all on its own. Yeah, kind of. So what, are we going to work our way from the inside out or the outside in? or Outside what are we gonna in, do? kind of. Okay. Ish. We're going to start with the horse. Of course. Of course. Of course. The horse. The you, famous Mr. Ed. You guys mm. have a picture in front of you. It's in black and white. Mm. I'm sorry. It's much less impressive than it is I, in uh... color. But hopefully you got a chance to see it. And you listeners at home... Uh, we'll probably post a picture of it. Now, I've seen this photo in color. It's actually a really nice photo. It's uh, awesome. Did you take it? I did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Good job. laughs> I and took that see, picture. Did you notice what's behind the Bronco? Oh, the thunderstorm? The mushroom cloud? Mm-hmm. It looks like a mushroom cloud. It does. It's like thundery, too. Yeah, yeah. Thunder and lightning. Very apocalyptic, mm-hmm. yeah. It's super apocalyptic. This, this is the one of the first things that you will notice about <laughs> DIA as you approach from the ground. This dude, the he's officially called Blue Mustang. He's also referred um, <laughs> to as Blucifer. I like Blucifer. Or That's the awesome. Demon Bronco by locals. <laughs> Since you're not looking at the picture because this is a podcast, not a TV show, I'll go ahead and just describe this gentleman to you. This beast of a gentleman. He is a 9,000 pound statue. And by the way, if he was actually made of, like, say, bronze or something like that, he'd weigh a hell of a lot more than 9,000 yeah. pounds. Yeah. Uh, he's a fairly new addition to the weirdness of DIA. He was commissioned in, uh, 1993 by, um, well, I guess we'll get to that, but it was meant to be art. It, it, oh, it is, kind of is art. It's it a is art. It's a pretty impressive piece of sculpture. It is. Yeah, me. absolutely. It's a 32 feet tall blue Mustang rearing up. It's pretty dang anatomically correct. Mm, yeah, yeah. That. Mm-hmm. Abs- absurdly mm-hmm. anatomically yeah. correct. Yeah. yeah, why was that necessary? I don't know. Ribs show airport, right? through the skin. The way the light shines on it. I initially, when I was looking at the picture and when I saw it in, in real life, I thought, oh, there's like weird zombie skin parts of it. But the more I looked at it, the more I realized it's just the way that it's lit. 
the way the light hits it, it gives it some yellowy areas, which mm. looked like zombie rot to me, but it's not. <laughs> well, he's, he's been, it's fiberglass, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think that the fiberglass is colored as part of it. So it's not an even mix. So you get weirdness areas. This yeah. is way, I, I think. Well, he is, he is totally blue. I've seen other pictures of him. He's oh, totally okay. blue. It's just a weird way that the light. Okay. Shine. <laughs> so he's not a zombie mm-hmm. horse. No, his tail and mane are, are spiky. And uh, oh yeah, he has red glowing eyes, which I love. I think yeah. that's awesome. They are. This is not a lie. <laughs> yeah. I did genuinely. I've seen this with my own eyes, and red that is the first eyes. thing you notice. You just kind of go, huh? There's some red eyes glowing in the distance there. <laughs> uh, you know, actually, oh, it's on a horse. You know, that's actually, why he's called Lucifer. Uh, mm. Exactly. But now, actually, I think that the reason for that is it's just aircraft warning lights. Mm. No. <laughs> it's not. They're not high enough. Yeah, no, they have I, to be on the very top. I think it's a nice touch, though. I, mean, I do too. So the sculpture wasn't installed until 2008. Why so late, you might ask? Well, it was sculpted by a man named Luis Jimenez, and he died in 2006. And you might be wondering how. Well, just because a 9,000-pound statue of a devil horse fell on him (laughs) and severed an artery in his leg. Yeah, that's just hilarious. I bet you can guess which one. There's not that many, but I bet you can guess which 9,000-pound horse. Oh, I thought you were saying which leg. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it wasn't the whole horse. It was just the head. It was just yeah. the head. Yeah, mm-hmm. which still weighs a lot, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But again, it's fiberglass. Imagine if this thing was made out of steel or bronze or yeah. something like that. Holy crap. So the sculpture was finished by his family and some students he had and then yeah. erected much late, two years later. I bet they're the ones who had the, the red glowing eyes. Yeah, maybe. But <laughs> because of that, people kind of say... It's cursed from the get-go. Mm. Of course. Of course. They're saying that the horse is cursed or the Because it killed cursed. the person who was making it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's pretty suspicious. Yeah. That's suspicious behavior for a horse head. Well, yeah. It depends. Is this a, a horse head from the mob? It could be. Yeah. As far as we know, it could be. Okay. Do you know who financed it? No. Mm. The Denver mm-hmm. International Airport? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, Do you know who financed? No, we're getting ahead of ourselves. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Next up is the weird shape of the airport. This, sorry, this is dumb. I agree. Yeah. The airport is made to resemble snow capped mountains and reflect the history of Colorado's na- native people. And by the airport, you mean the, the building, mm-hmm. the terminals. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just making sure you're not talking about the whole surrounding area. Mm-mm. Yeah. Sorry. It's, uh, also meant to reflect Colorado's natives who lived in teepees across the Great Plains. So the roof is actually made of fabric and it's big white peaks. Mm-hmm. It, well, the roof, some people say that it is meant to resemble a UFO. Uh, it doesn't resemble any UFO I've ever seen. Well, since UFOs are definitely housed below the airport, which we'll get to in a minute. No, of course they are. Uh, that's what they're made to resemble. But I really think it just looks like a giant circus tent. No, I agree. That's, uh, when, the, when the first time I saw it, that's what I thought. Yeah. I thought, I, yeah. Who decided to do this? I don't know. I, I also thought. kind of wonder who, like Colorado, not the most stable weather state. Yeah. Uh, Denver, also not the most stable weather city. I'm not totally sure who was like, oh, you know, it's an excellent idea. Let's yeah, make this roof out of fabric. Well, okay. So there's two things. One's a joke, mm-hmm. which is they have a lot of weed in Colorado. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. other is, and I'm actually going to bash on this a couple of times, which is artists' perspectives and interpretations that they can pitch and sell. And I, I work in the art industry. I understand this. But somebody did a fantastic fantastic sales job yeah. saying this is what an abstract means and blah 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 and I'm sure that what they did is they showed them a rendering of one or two of the little TP tops mm-hmm. at their snow capped mountains that they were supposed to be instead of the what is it nine or ten or something yeah, that's a there's a lot I mean it it lose it doesn't look anything like it's supposed to mm-hmm. and I'm I would be willing to bet dollars to donuts that's how that happened well the interesting thing is um gosh I don't remember when I think it was 2008 but I can't recall exactly uh, there was a huge snowstorm and it ripped, and it ripped <laughs> yeah. open part of the ceiling. And what did they do? They just fixed it. 
duct tape. Yeah. yeah. They weren't, they didn't say, oh, hey, maybe fabric's a bad idea. They just, uh, quote unquote, improved their snow removal systems. Ah. It had two feet of snow on the floor of the mm-hmm. airport. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Colorado. Two feet in the terminal, <laughs> that's, dude. That's hilarious. They it, closed it down for like four days. Yeah, it was like a 30-foot long rip, if I remember yeah. right, by the end. You know, it, of course, it, it keeps growing. But It was just, it had huge implications <laughs> for the air traffic control well, of America. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, it's, it's a major hub. And the, the interesting thing is, like, you know, I've noted this. A lot of times, your, your artistic architectural types... We'll design these cool things with absolutely no thought to how they can possibly be, be maintained and repaired. How, do you, how exactly do you get up there to clean that roof? You can't exactly walk on it, can you? I don't know. I don't think I mean, so. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> well, haven't... Uh, how do you get up there to repair it? Uh, well, you know, there's these things that are called man lifts that scissor up and reach over, and there's some yo-yo with, uh, with a pressure washer. The, maybe. Uh, yeah. I, I'll bet you that's how they do it. Well, is... I'm thinking is they have a crane, and they have, they have some guy in a harness, and they just lower him face down on a rope like Tom Cruise <laughs> in Mission Impossible, and he's, he's holding a hose in his hand. Dun, 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 <laughs> so dun, so dun, you dun, never dun, want to make dun, the crane operator mad, because he'll just... <laughs> Okay, so anyway, but no, we didn't answer the question though. I mean, okay, so are we going to answer it later? Are the, are there actually UFOs underneath? We'll talk about it okay. later. Yes. Yeah, of course we will. Of course, I we think will. it's that's not directly related to the mountaintop slash TP roof mm-hmm. of well, no, the airport. They were saying that people were saying that that's just reminiscent of UFOs, which of course are stored underneath the airport. That's I think that I think, correct me if I'm wrong, if either of you come across this, but I think that's because UFOs traditionally are considered as a round saucer. Mm-hmm. Well, a TP, its base is a round saucer. Mm-hmm. So it's a series, it would be considered kind of a series of them. Or the other way to look at it is what was that uh, Stargate? Mm. Where that ship would land on the pyramid, so we're we're making you know points for it to land on an anchor on. I mean, mm-hmm. this is the only thing I can come up with because I didn't find a whole lot. On I didn't it. find a whole lot either. Yeah, and, and you know, you, it um, seems like there the was problem. A... We uh, make fun of. I think would be the term I would use. A lot of conspiracy theories, not necessarily because I want to disregard them, but more because I just can't buy into anything that just says offhand oh yeah cause it's because it looks like it looks like ufos well, and then no... doesn't explain how yeah. which there's i so couldn't much, find anything there's about, so much so. hot air and hand waving but when you say okay i'm totally willing to accept that just give me something to base it on besides your personal observation and belief and i think that's where yeah we i think all three of us mm-hmm. run into issues with mm-hmm. those yeah yeah i think that uh this this one thing in particular is, is one of those instances where people just thought they'd put a whole lot of bilge out there and see how how much how much traction sticks. it got yeah. yeah and it got a lot because mm-hmm. yes there's a lot of uh things like this things that are completely seem to be kind of baseless and just based on just one person's assertion that's yeah so anyway but i'm getting ahead of myself next up the murals mm-hmm. Oy. Yeah, admittedly well. these are super weird okay they just are no they just are no, no I, they are. I agree they are they but are. i agree yeah, we uh, we wandered around DIA looking definitely not suspicious at all, taking all <laughs> sorts of pictures. So I'm sure I'm on a lot of lists at this point. Yeah, we all are. Uh, but this one in particular, you know, my guide and I spent, I would say, an hour and a half wandering around trying to find them. Walked past them like twice on just the other side of the, the, the hallway terminal. that they're in. Because, you know, they always have those, like, ads and maps and stuff like that. So we were just like, where are these things? And then we stopped and I took, like, a million pictures and just, like, kept looking around waiting for people to pass the mural so I didn't have anything. I think in that's it. a regular occurrence. Gosh, I hope so. These, yeah, these things seem to be kind of famous. The murals, they're, they're weird. Uh, my guide yeah. insisted that they were just meant to, quote, depict man-made environmental destruction and genocide along with humanity coming together to heal nature and live in peace. Oh, you hired a native guide. That which, was quite awesome. Which is bunk, and that is actually just a quote from the artist, not my guide. <laughs> yeah. But my guide said yes, that's pretty much, he not so eloquently said 
those words. So you think that you think that the artist's words in describing his uh, his paintings are bunk, or do you think that is his thoughts of talking about humanity coming together to heal nature and live in peace? Do you think that's bunk? I think his description of what the murals are meant to be about is bunk. Yeah. So I'm gonna wait he's... till the end on this one. Thank you. I'm yeah. Gonna... Yeah. Bite yeah. My lip. In fairness, there are there are two murals, uh, which are each two panels each. And parts of the overall art are often left out. Mm, the rational wiki on the murals, in fact, says that the second mural, murals, the second half of the murals, which are the, quote, oft left out ones, are, quote, much happier, which, no, it, they're not. They're not really. I mean, they're a little happier, but they're all still, they're just so weird, all of them. They are very weird. And but... I... I guess I'll just describe them a little bit. You can find pictures of these online. Very easily. Really, really easily. One is called In Peace and Harmony with Nature. And the second one is called The Children of the World Dream of World Peace. The one titled In Peace and Harmony with Nature shows sad children over the destruction of the environment and extinction of life. A huge fire burns behind them. Animals are dead and in glass cases. And, oh, yeah, there's three dead women in coffins at the bottom of the mural. I think one of them is even, like, a little girl. I think you're right. The pairing of this, the second pane, I guess, of it, is a bunch of kids in traditional outfits crowded joyfully around some kind of rainbow plant thing with animals and healthy landscapes behind them. Mm. The Children of the World Dream of World Peace, redundant, is the one that uh, lots of people kind of point to. It's the one that's pretty awful. And the first panel is a soldier in a a gas mask. Uh, He's often described as a Nazi soldier. There's no Mm -hmm. actual... He, he looks like he could be a Russian, too. You know, he knows. Yeah. You can't. Wearing it's gray, literally just gas Wearing a gray overcoat. Yeah. He's got a gun in one hand and a sword in the other. He's slicing a dove open, and it looks like there's a concentration camp kind of in the background. The artist often points out that there are sleeping children in the rubble, so it makes it okay. But uh, they actually kind of just look dead, not sleeping. Uh, yeah, I've never figured out how that was supposed to be sleeping. Yeah. The second half or a uh, second pane of this one is kids from countries around the world in pairings traditionally signifying tensions. That is an American kid and a Russian kid or a Palestinian kid and an Israeli kid carrying weapons wrapped in their respective flags to be broken in half by a blonde, super Aryan looking kid <laughs> yeah. over the crippled body of the soldier from the previous pain. Uh, crippled? He looks to me like he's dead. Yeah. I think he's a statue that's been knocked, like, knocked over, over because the, the feet look mm-hmm. like they're broken and locked in one place and the, mm-hmm. the body is down in another. Yeah. I think it was a statue kind of. Yeah. yeah. So I think that the the quote unquote happier versions of these are still really really weird. Yeah. Uh, still have a lot of really weird symbolism in them, and I guess really the big question is, though I I kind of appreciate the artistry, and I think that I kind of understand what the artist is trying to do. I just think the Denver airport is a real weird place for them. Well, and for somebody to be trying is, to make that strong of a statement. This is actually easily explained by three words. It, Publicly funded art. Yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, I can actually yeah. explain it in one word. Yeah. What? Procrastination. Oh, that's that's yeah. What it was? I'm pretty sure those look like they're oil paintings to me. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that the artist in question, they they again, they said here's my reasoning and yada, yada, yada. And they did a great sales job and everybody said, yes, we'll put those up. But I'm really pretty sure that they got pitched one idea and they could never make it happen, but they just happened to have a bunch of canvases sitting around and either they had already done those artworks that were just completely harebrained or when, oh crap, I'm just going to start. I'm just going to start painting this something and see what happens. And it comes out super duper dark and uh, I don't have time to fix this. Yeah, I This think, is for yeah. children in world peace. Like, I, I really, I've read the artist descriptions. Yeah. And I don't buy any of No, it. not really. But I think, actually, I think really the culprit here is the baggage system. There was, <laughs> there was, there was only like about 50 bucks left over in the budget mm-hmm. for our art. And so, yeah, they had to get some graffiti artist off the street and say, hey, it's got to look like, not quite like graffiti. Can you do something? And, you know, that's, so that's what they got. But well, that's I, not the only bit of weird art there, though. Oh, I see Steve's notebook out. Yes, as mm. always. 
Do you guys remember, and, and anybody who's been through the baggage claim area will know this, the gargoyles? Yeah. yeah. The weirdest thing. I was about to use a different word. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. The weirdest thing ever, especially to get off a flight at like, hey, midnight <laughs> after having been moving all day and walking to baggage claim and having that be the very first thing you really see of Denver Airport. I know, I love yeah, it. it. For was, anybody who hasn't ugh. been to Denver Airport, there are two gargoyles in the baggage claim area and it is kind of the old school Samsonite uh, luggage yeah. and then a gargoyle is sticking out of it and they're goofy, weird, creepy looking because they're gargoyles. But yeah. people also... All kinds of things are attributed to why those gargoyles are there. Mm -hmm. I did a little research. Yeah. Awesome. I can tell you also, I guess to add to it, they are uplit. Yeah. Which yeah. anybody who knows anything about lighting. Looks it, a little creepy. It's really creepy. You know, yeah. they really they really should have made them animatronic so they do. <laughs> so yeah. if you're there like late at night and the lights are a little dim and there's not a lot of people and suddenly you hear this noise and you look up and that thing is starting to like, it's like slowly moving moves. like this, mm -hmm. you know. And, and All they had to do is put weird moving red eyes. Well, that's all and, they had to do. Well, they blew the eye budget on the horse. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, true. yeah. That's true. Yeah, no, but imagine if you're down there and, like, you're just sort of, there's a, only a few people there and it starts to move its wings a little bit and its head swivels around and it looks, it turns its beady red eyes on you. <laughs> what would you do? I would run. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I would run fast. I would figure it was an animatronic and be eaten alive by yeah. the real gargoyle. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, um, anyway, back to your thing. Well, no, so gargoyles, uh, anybody who's looked at architectural history have been around forever mm -hmm. and gargoyles were a Initially, uh, they're they're a symbol of protection for mm -hmm. buildings and people. Mm -hmm. So I'm but pretty sure that. But when they're sure on the that... outside, don't they have to be on the outside? No, no, no. Oh, they're they... on the outside because gargoyles were on the outside because they were used as a um, a drainage system uh, for the roof. Yeah, so they were decorative. Yeah, yeah, they were a decorative way. So you've got yeah. all the drainage coming off the roof, and it hits a pipe, and it shoots way out over the right. building, and and the name gargoyle comes from the sound that water makes when it runs through that mouth yeah. opening pipe of gurgle. gurgle, gurgle, gurgle. The gurgling sound. Yeah, yeah. it kind of sounds like it. But gargoyles are a symbol of protection. There's nothing nefarious or disturbing. I mean, if you ever watched the... Well, I know Joe didn't, but yeah. you might have watched that cartoon Gargoyles back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay, see, they were protectors. They well, yes. were good gargoyles. Well, they're just like Pazuzu. <laughs> Pazuzu? Pazuzu? Pazuzu, you ungrateful gargoyle. Uh -huh. <laughs> I put you through college, and this is how you repay me? <laughs> but no, gargoyles are a thing of protection. Okay. So that, I think that's where that came from. I think right. that actually they put them in the baggage claim area so that they would sort of intimidate people and people wouldn't try to steal other people's baggage. There's another thing that I that was in the baggage claim, just as a side note, that I've never seen anywhere else. I'm sure it exists other places, but their oversized baggage claim, I don't know if you you guys noticed this when you went through Denver they're really just like big vertical stalls that go around on a conveyor belt in a horizontal manner so it's like you could literally like step in one of those as and a human go into being. the back side they're actually perfectly human sized <laughs> and it just goes around <laughs> And Ooh. my first thought was really just like, it kind of looked like a human vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It did. I mean, it just, they were perfectly human sized. It was very odd. You didn't get on the uh, hop on? I did was not. On the side? No. She did not want to be uh, in the no. human vending machine. Mm -mm, no. I don't blame you. No. Yeah. But I guess speaking of art, there's some, it's kind of art. This next thing we're going to talk about. Oh yeah. The markings on the ground. Yes. Yeah, okay. Kind of like inlay, right? Okay, 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 okay. What does AUAG mean? This is gold and silver? Aug. Yeah. Aug, no. Aug. A A U and then A G, right? Yeah. Two separate, right? Gold and silver, two minerals traditionally found in Colorado, source of the state's history. AU stands for gold and AG stands for silver, right? Yeah. What if I told you that it also stands for Australia? Antigen AUAG, which is a weaponized strain of hepatitis B. Well, also, also that it's engraved or inlaid in the floor at the Denver airport. So uh, you're saying that like uh, hep it's like a hepatitis B center. Just 
weaponized, yeah, hepatitis weaponized. B. Yeah, I yeah. Like did it. you guys also know that the person who discovered this weaponized H hepatitis B, he funded, he was the sponsor of the Denver airport. Did you know that? No. Did you know, know that? that? Steve, did you know that? I didn't know that. I'm I, just going to continue I've heard that. Blinking. Okay. Well, that's not true. None of that's true. Of course not. Yeah. <laughs> but you will read that everywhere. Well, except for the gold and silver bread. That stuff's true. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Well, the good news is the actual marker for the strain of hepatitis B is actually HBSAG, not AUAG. And uh, I think Steve did some research on this, but it's an antigen. Yeah. Which I had always understood and Steve corroborated is actually what your body produces to fight the thing exactly right? it's to create an immune reaction yeah yeah, yeah so, so it's, uh, to create antibodies which means it's i'm not totally an sure yeah so I'm not it's sure actually how... a lot more benevolent than these people make it sound yeah. yeah yeah oh oh hey also the the man in question who discovered this strain of hepatitis b oh he happens to be nobel laureate baruch samuel bloomberg who has literally no link whatsoever to Denver, the Denver <laughs> airport. Uh, so, you, so, so you'd like to, he'd like you to think. He was also not wildly rich. He certainly wasn't wildly rich enough to sponsor an entire airport to himself. I usually leave that stuff to the city in question and maybe the airlines. Yeah. 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 So, oh, also that brick with AUAG on it. Guess guess what's right over it? They're surrounding it? Yeah. Other bricks? It's uh no, it's uh it's a mining cart right yeah. over it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then it's it's you know capital A lowercase u and then uh, lots of spaces and then capital A cap my, or lowercase G. And there's lots of other bricks all around it, mostly... Tiles? Tiles, I guess, yeah. Tiles because it's, is, it's a stone floor, they're right? They're big, yeah, they're big stones, yeah. So they are tiles, you're right. That's probably a better word for them. But most of them are Native American symbols or words or things like that. You will see other places, people talking about the alien writing that's written <laughs> all over yeah. the floor. Those are literally all Indian words, they are. <laughs> They yeah. just are Native American words. Mm. Um, okay, but I then people. but then the question arises, but why why is this one right in front of the mural with the death Nazi on it? Mm. Well, it's not. It's not even close. It's no. not even, like, adjacent. Actually, wait, 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 wait. They're saying this is in front of the mural that's got the, the guy with the yeah. sword? Yeah. Okay. They've clearly yeah. never been there. I think that they, uh, they need to call in that guy um, from... You know, the Dan Brown book, uh, Da Vinci Code. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he could figure this out in a heartbeat. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It would take him like 12 hours. Mm. He'd have a crazy chase through the tunnels and, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Oy. Okay, what else? What, what, what other Actually, fun do we have here? Next thing is we're going to talk about the dedication marker next, also often referred to as the capstone. You know, that thing just looks to me like something to trip over. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty big. It's... Uh, I guess, to be fair, it's a hard thing to ignore. It's what lights people's hair on fire. It sure does. And I think... Uh, First, I mean, with there's, some there's good some reason. valid reasons, I'll yeah. admit. But. It's kind of like a sundial a little bit, the capstone. It's a capstone, and then it has a big kind of rod sticking out of it a little bit. It's not a circle. The capstone is, well, like a keystone. It's it looks it looks like, like. Um, it actually looks like the, the, the big heavy thing on top of a tomb. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the big heavy stone on top of a tomb. Yeah. Yeah. It just makes you think like dead body. Like a big body. headstone. Yeah, it's dead body yeah. down there. Well, so it's, it not only informs the public of uh, the details of the project, kind of, but also it marks the spot of a time capsule that's meant to be opened in um, 2094. The contents of the capsule uh, include lots of things, you know, the kind of things you would put in a time capsule. Photos of notable places in Denver around the 1990s, memorabilia from the old Denver airport, Colorado flags, newspapers, a credit card for some reason. Because those yeah. were awesome. Uh, yeah, they, I suppose they're going to be gone by the time 2090. But, you know. It's just one credit card. I don't know why. I don't know what's uh, going it's on. It's interesting. I wonder well, if it's got that any... card has not been reported lost or stolen yet. Yet. Uh, it also includes some programs uh, from all of the New World Airport Commission's events. This is just one exciting time capsule. I gotta yeah, say. it really is. I can't wait to open this one yeah. up. Yeah, well, actually, you, you may be wondering, you at home, 
there may have been some words in there that kind of piqued your interest. I didn't. Like the New World Airport Commission. Mm. Oh, I thought you were talking about credit card. Oh, no. But you may be wondering what that is, and to be honest, uh, me too. I couldn't find anything that wasn't outright conspiracy theories on the organization online, and I know Steve is giving me the look, which means he found some stuff, which is fine. Uh, You know, when you Google New World Airport Commission, it either comes up with Denver Airport, or, oh my God, these people are going to take over the world! And reduce the population to 2 million and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. Um, it's not the New World Order. No, but it's the New World Airport. But it is suspiciously close to the New World Order. Yeah, yeah, the New, the new yeah. World Airport. So this capstone also has names of the mayor, governor, and secretary of transportation at the time on it. The notice of the time capsule. Then also the Masonic Freemason symbol. Yeah. Also engraved on it are, quote, the most worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge F and AM of Colorado and jurisdiction. And then, quote, the most worshipful Grand Lodge of AD and AM of Colorado. It also then below says that the airport was funded by the New World Airport, or yeah, the New World Airport Commission. And again, it doesn't. It's it's not an official thing, and that lights a lot of people on fire. Is is the term I guess we're using right now? But listed under it are contributors, which are an architecture firm, a metal company, and an aeronautics company. And even if before I let Steve, because he's like chomping at the bit right now, before I let him go Freaking for out, it, man. Even if these are just three innocent sponsors who formed a commission called the New World Airport Commission. Come on, guys. Like, pick a pick a better name. Like, oh, pick a less suspicious name, though. Terrible name. Like, why would you... Yeah, why but, would that be the thing that you pick? But the thing is, is, like, the, the whole New World Order thing hadn't really blossomed that much. I mean, it was like... This was like... Um, the New World Order didn't come into being until a speech was given by George W. George H. W. Bush, the first yeah. Bush, in what, I think, the, the very early 90s. Yeah. After the fall of the Soviet Union. We well, were... We, we were looking at a whole different world order because the Soviets were gone. And when did the airport open? It opened in... 1995, correct? Yeah. 95. Yeah. So 95. So that's, 95. It, this is after that speech. No, it is. But, if, but the construction on the airport began before that speech. Right, but they weren't. It wasn't like a registered LLC or anything. That was just the no, name it was, they gave. It themselves. was a bunch of business guys exactly. who got together right. and said, "We're going to help sponsor this. This is the new for the area World Airport." Exactly. It's, yeah, it's not New World. It's New World Airport because yes, it's, it's an international airport. Yeah. Exactly. And the thing about it is, is like. Uh, uh, he he gives his speech and he talks about well you know it's a new world order because golly it's not a bipolar world and and all that stuff the cold war is over and, and of course the conspiracy in that case is and the paranoids go nuts with this and start running with it but do you really expect a bunch of middle aged businessmen to be up on that stuff and to be paying attention <laughs> to that stuff no no I, no that's true it just seems like maybe saying like new international airport. Commission. Or the new Denver International Airport yeah. Commission. Yeah. Yeah. Something way more description descriptive instead of, I got this cool idea. Mm. Yeah, the New World Airport Commission. Yes. Yeah, I, know. I mean, it, it makes sense. If you, if you look at it without running it together and adding, you know, all these other things to the name, the new World Airport, it makes sense. Yeah. It totally yeah, no, it makes does. sense it does. locally. Yeah, kind I, of. I would have just called it the new friggin' airport committee. <laughs> yeah, or international. Or yeah, or, or about time we got a new airport commission. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, their old airport sucked. It was not great. No, no it no. was really bad. Although yeah. you know, a lot of people claim that uh, it, it wasn't nearly that bad at all, and, and so that's part of that's fed into conspiracy theories. So they replaced it. Was it was really really airport. awful? Oh, you know, it was really awful. I, I just want to go ahead and go on record and say it was awful. It was no. terrible. Noise had, complaints in yeah. the bad snowstorms. I don't remember how many airport air, 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 air runways it had, but it, they could operate about. 20% yeah, of no. what they were supposed to run. And, of course, Denver is, you know, usually has bad air, bad weather. And In the so, wintertime, it's yeah, high it, up. It, it's snowy. Yeah. Well, they, oh, so, yeah. actually, so this was a fun fact. They The layout of the runways was such that they were too close together. Yep. So in inclement weather, they couldn't. They could only use one of those two. Hmm. But then also the runways intersected each other at multiple points. So you couldn't have... 
a airplane taking off and landing at the same time. It was basically just like a cross. Yeah, no. Yeah, like, like a hash mark. Like that. Yeah. It's an easy way to think about yeah, it. Yeah, and then they just couldn't use like most of them because the weather was bad. No. Yeah. yeah. No, they could have continued to use it. They just wouldn't have been a major hub as yeah. they are now. Yeah. yeah. Well, especially in the wintertime. The, yeah. But the thing that I found that... I was really, I got really excited about at first is, so we've got the, the Masons are sponsoring uh-huh. part of this and they're on that, uh, that dedication yeah, stone. Yeah, yeah. And we've talked about the new world order and how it's trying mm. to reduce the population to 2 billion, I think. Yeah. Is that yeah. 2 billion seems to be the sweet spot. Yeah. I managed to somehow, I believe, figure out where that name number came from. I like that this is where we're taking this on. <laughs> in the middle of an episode about the denver airport we're gonna myth bust the two billion I, cap i i, I stumbled as well. across it yeah yeah no. so yeah. i i gotta thank the guys at stuff you should know yeah because they did an episode on population control and that's where i suddenly made the links so though they never actually laid it out. I figured it out. So there's a guy by the name of Thomas Robert Malthus. Mm-hmm. And he, uh, he he wrote of what he called the Malthusian catastrophe, which was overpopulation would lead to famine and death. And this is back in the 1800s. He writes this. I think it was the late 1800s is when he, he did his research for population control. Mm -hmm. You jump forward to 1968, and I know Joe is is looking at me because he knows what's coming. Oh, yeah. (laughs) It's Paul Ehrlich writes The Population Bomb, Mm -hmm. which is Everybody calls an alarmist piece of work because he, the first thing he starts out with saying is that we're all going to die, essentially, saying that the world can't sustain us and two billion is the max number and we need to control births and we need to change all this stuff. But somehow, I mean, today, most people look at his work and say he's wrong. His math was wrong. He and Malthus were wrong, but somehow that two billion got pulled in with the New World Order, and that number always gets drug along when you're talking about the New World Order stuff. Yeah, it's... And it's uh, all this human carrying capacity. That's where it comes from. Yeah, it's funny, the thing about Ehrlich is that uh, he made a lot of predictions, not just about uh, overpopulation. None of them were right. Oh, no, every single one of them was wrong. Um, One could say he was the John Teeter of... Yeah. 1968. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, so his... uh, Malthusianism is still very popular. I mean, there's still people today... Oh, yeah. ...who are predicting all sorts of dire outcomes, at least in the days of Malthus, the original days of him. I mean, famine was not that uncommon back in his day, so he can be forgiven, I suppose, but... uh, some of the yeah, people that are absolutely. still jumping on board some of the bandwagons of, of, of things like, oh, my God, peak oil. No, we're not running short anytime soon. Things like that. Um, plenty of food, population. You know, and the two billion number, I, the, thing, the, the reason I have a problem with the two billion number and relating it to the new world order is the new world order are uh, the, these people who are behind it. The, are they part of our elite? They're part of this probably extremely rich capitalist elite. Yep. Well, reducing the population to 2 billion people really doesn't make them any money, I don't think. And that's yeah. why the paranoia over, you know, this mass reduction in in, in population is, is ludicrous because hey, you know, are we really going to like cause our economies to shrink and cause us all to get cause us all to get poorer? Are we really going to do this? I well, uh, I think uh, that people look at it as is if that top echelon of people, these these rich guys that are at the top and in control, yeah. they if they if the new world order goes into effect and we I don't know how this happens, but suddenly the the population is cut to two billion. Mm-hmm. Now they're royalty. Mm-hmm. So now they get to make that royalty lineage. So it's not making money in a capitalist sense. They're just all, they're top dogs, mm. and they they're they're, they're, they're on a big pile of cash. They're and... going to sit on a pile of cash, and all their descendants are going to sit there. And we're way off topic here, I, but but I, that's what I found, and I, I had to bring it up. Is that's where this whole new world order two, two billion. billion people thing comes from? As best I can tell, this is the first time I've ever been able to put two and two together on this. Yeah, I'm, eh, you know, it, it's nobody really knows what the magic number is. I mean, I think the Earth could support like tens of billions more people, 
Well, whether we should or not is, you know, less debatable. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know why $2 billion is suspicious, right? Why? It's because that's exactly how over budget they went on this project. <laughs> oh, my God. You're right. Oh, my God. <laughs> So that explains everything. That explains. I mean, they were they were like they were like looking at this and thinking, "Oh my God, you know, they, we're not going to go over budget at all. What can we do? I know an automated luggage system, <laughs> <laughs> and let's do something else." But you're going to talk about that later. Yeah, I'm sure. we're going to get some weird paintings. There was some. Yeah, the weird paint. They paid. I told you. I already proved they only paid fifty bucks for those paintings. Next up is the layout of the runways, and all I have to say about that is, calm down, you guys. It really doesn't look that much like a swastika. Just calm down. Yeah. You know? Cool. Uh, Next. Draw lines on the airport and then remove the photo of the airport and the runways don't look like a swastika. Yeah. No, mm. calm down. No, not really. Next up, underground bunkers and tunnels. Okay. So now we're venturing into territory that I didn't get to see with my own two eyes because mm-hmm. people are the worst and my security clearance wasn't approved in time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you probably, so, you know, you probably walked right past a bunch of secret doors. Yeah, I probably did. Um, and since I didn't get to see it with my own two eyes, we're just going to not even talk about this part. Cool? Great. Ah, really? Just kidding. Ah, no. No, I knew you were joking. There, so there's a tram system that, as far as I can tell takes um, not as far as i can tell it takes you from one concourse to another and i didn't i couldn't tell if there was a way to walk between concourses i there should be but i don't think there is there has to be there should be yeah you would think if the, if the if the trains go down, you have to have a way for people to walk out. Yeah, out of the train system, sure, but walk in between concourses, I don't know. That was a. It's fine. It doesn't really matter. I didn't want to pour too much stuff into that. No, well, I, I'm just thinking is that I've been in airports, like I was in Atlanta mm-hmm. a couple months back, and I know that you can get on the train and it zips you from concourse to concourse in no time flat. But unfortunately, about 10 years prior, I had said, well, I'm used to the Portland International Airport. Oh, just walk They it. can't be that far. <laughs> and I decided to walk from one to the other, and it took me 25 minutes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, like in L.A., like a... you literally can't. You have to get on a bus or the tram, right? No, you there can't are walk at all? You can't because it it's there on the other side of the tarmac. Ah, so I don't know if it was like that. I didn't get a good sense of that. It's not really that important. The only thing that really stood out to me on the trams, well, actually, that's not true. My guide was telling me about how in the tunnels, on one side of the tunnels, there's these like silver pinwheel things, lots of them. And uh, he said to me, well, what are they trying to distract you from? Huh? <laughs> So I turned oh. when we when we saw them. I like turned to the other side. It's just wall. It's just concrete. There's nothing there. So, uh, <laughs> no, so but the only thing that I did what, notice. What sorry, are these? What do these pinwheel things look like exactly? They just look like little silver pinwheels. They're uh, just interesting, you know, because the wind. Were they set in the wall or what? Yeah, they're like a little off the wall. Little they're off. basically the train goes by, the wind makes them spin, yeah. and there's something for uh, you to see. Mm-hmm. They're I they're see. installation art. Mm-hmm. I they see. Are. I see. So yeah. Did you notice at any point we watching the tracks? Did you notice like like tracks branching off and just going into a, a blank wall? Not into a blank wall, a but door? I will say that it did seem like the tram system. You know, there are moments in a subway system, right, that it opens up a little bit and there's all these interchanges, and it seemed a little more complex than necessary for what I deemed to be just a back and forth tram system, but. I'm sure there are a lot of reasonable explanations for that other than we're transporting this car of Illuminati members off into the distance so that they can go to their underground bunker. Chances are good that the tram system station where they do all their maintenance runs off the same line Mm -hmm. and it could be yeah and they have to have multiple junctions i mean we have a train system here in portland that i ride every day and there are all kinds of junctions on that thing the great thing Mm -hmm. is it's above ground and Mm -hmm. i can see where they go into a big building Mm -hmm. where they work on them where something's going on (laughs) you don't know what though yeah yeah, wait, thanks for shooting that apart on you. Yeah. I yeah. totally had that solved. Oh, they might work on them. I'm just saying that, you know, it might be a... No, I've actually been in those trains a lot. Else. They probably don't work on they them. They probably yeah. don't. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point, too. <laughs> the underground also, there's that fascinating defunct automated baggage system that I mentioned earlier. Poor um, grandma's baggage. Well, theorists 
suggest i'm just using the term theorist so i'm not going to preface that one with anything but we can all fill in the blank there suggest that there's something more nefarious going on down there mostly because the system cost a bunch of money and never really worked oh it's not like we've never done that before yeah yeah <laughs> No, really. It looks like it was a cool concept, but I'm not totally sure why it never really worked. Uh, There's a lot of stuff flying around the internet about why it... Tons of mechanical issues. Yeah. Bad design, I, think, I would say. You know, some people say that it was too complex. Others say that it was a failed concept from the start. Still others say it's covering up something sinister, like an underground base for anything, ranging from the American government to the Illuminati to, yep, Aliens. Wait, wait, did you just say the Illuminati? I did. Are you sure that's wise to bring those guys up? Yes. We'll be okay. I think we're going to be okay. Can we get back to the automated baggage system real oh, quick? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. You have more things to say. No, about it? no. I just, I just have a very simple personal observation, which is if anybody were to build that baggage system today, it would work. You know why? Because yeah. we actually have decent computers that have good yeah. laser scanners for reading and barcodes and all that. Yeah, robotics are a lot better than they were back in those days. <laughs> the pro I, I don't know how that thing figured out what went where, but yeah. I'm guessing that that was part of the problem, is it was probably a, a barely advanced past prototype stage thing, and that's why it never made well, it. Well, I mean... But they couldn't afford to pull it all out of the tunnel. Honestly, but... though, I don't think that it... I don't think that the computer system would have been really the big problem. Yes, it's, what, 20-some-odd years ago at this point. <laughs> You're welcome, everyone. The 1995 was, like, more than 20 years ago. But... There's people that next year will get to drink. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay, but scanners still existed computers were okay it's not as though this is a highly complex task that we were asking computers and machines to do it's fairly rudimentary it should have been possible it truly should have been possible but for whatever reason but, it wasn't but you know. I'm not, I'm, yeah I'm, I'm gonna i was about to launch into a host of well it's got to be this and that and this and that and this and all these Details, oh, it absolutely we're not going to go into that. No. My answer is as simple as embedding RFID tags in those silly little baggage tags that you get now. That solves the entire problem. Absolutely. But just, the, I mean, the, the simple idea of putting a scanner, they all have those barcodes on them anyways. That's how they do it right now anyways. It just takes the human element out of it. To it pick up the tag should, and scan it. Should have been possible, but for whatever it's, reason, it wasn't. No, actually, yeah. I mean, we've actually, humanity has designed far more complex systems. I mean, look at the moon landings, for Christ's mm. sakes. I mean, mm -hmm. So it's possible. Yeah. But I mean, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, as we said, and or as I said earlier, okay, yeah. So they built all these tunnels. The tunnels can't be used for anything else because they couldn't afford to pull all the. The, the stuff out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were crammed with all these parts that were thousands of dollars. And you're not, oh, you've abandoned the idea. You're not going to spend thousands of dollars a day for dudes to go in there with wrenches and pull it all out. Yeah. No, I mean, and they might actually be thinking um, at some point we can rehabilitate this whole thing. Yeah. With a little, some advances in technology, we can actually yeah. make it work. It's you know? possible. Yeah. There's also several very unsubstantiated claims. That what when, do you mean by unsubstantiated? <laughs> that when DIA was first being built, five buildings were built uh, somehow wrong and just buried. Yeah, I like that. It's like, oh, you guys, guys, you screwed the pooch. Bury these buildings. Just bury them. Instead of tearing them down, they just buried them and then built the current airport on top of it. Do you know uh, how deep of a hole you'd have to dig to, or how much ground you'd have to stack on top to well, bury a single-story building? I don't think... Well... These, these were not single-story buildings, were they? They weren't single stories, that's, but... But that's my point. Yeah, I mean... Right, but on top of that, parts of the current DIA are underground. Yeah. <laughs> so you'd have to bury it deep enough, <laughs> and all while nobody saw it. Yeah. I and don't... Uh... Where do you get all the dirt for that? Because, I mean, if you just bury the buildings, then what you've got is you've got this 
big old hill mm -hmm. right there in the middle of it, right next to your airport, right? Right. Which I can't see in any pictures or no. aerials or anything. No, although there is yeah. that suspicious landfill not so far away. Oh, yeah, they could have just covered it with trash. There is did that. you did you find anything? <laughs> no, on the I'm just being a jerk. Nah, no. I'd looked I'd looked for information on the landfill and I couldn't find it on the aerials. Everybody or screams about the landfill and I couldn't find and anything. And I was there. Like I didn't notice a giant landfill, although like I don't Fifty three square miles, it could be pretty far out there. But... I guess, but I drove I mean, I was around Denver and the airport for a while, so doing research, obviously. Yeah, doing <laughs> lots of research and drinking, but yeah. Uh, so uh, the, but apparently the... the claims come from a quote unquote construction company whistleblower, which yeah. sure. Yeah, this, this is one of those things that I think it's one of those ones that I think people make up something that's just so preposterous that, you know, how could anybody possibly believe it? And they just put it out on the Internet and see who goes with it. I, yeah. Again, Some I, people have. I, I just don't understand how that is possible to, to raise the grade so much that you can bury a single or multi-story building. That yeah. Just, yeah. And, well, I guess I don't want to be a downer, but there is a news channel that's based in Denver that makes a habit of debunking DIA myths. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And this is one of the myths that they took on. So they were granted the access that I was denied because <laughs> bureaucracy, man. Uh -huh. Damn the man. <laughs> they got to take their cameras down under to see what's really going on. And long story short, mm, nothing. Nothing. Wait, were they uh, in the baggage tunnels or? Yeah, in all the, the tunnels. The buried buildings? There were no, or... buried, there were no buried buildings. No, no buried buildings? No. Mm -mm. But they were in all the tunnels under there. And it, it's pretty boring. It's eerie for sure. But there's not really anything going on down there. But, of course, you, you've got to expect that the Illuminati and the New World Orderlies and all those people um, are probably They're very... They're orderlies? Yeah, the New World Orderlies, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah, you've got to expect that these people are very adept at creating things like false walls and, and, and hidden I guess, doorways. in fairness, right, it would be a good tactic to say, oh, yeah, you can come down come and see. Come on down and look, yeah. There's nothing down here. Uh-huh. Oh, the, what? That, that door? Oh, that's an emergency exit. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. It'll sound an alarm. Don't go through there. <laughs> Don't do it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so in fairness. TSA only is uh -huh. spray painted. Yeah. yeah, like just written in Sharpie on it. <laughs> I love it. Do not yeah. enter on like a piece of printer paper <laughs> taped to the wall. Yeah, yeah. You know, I would. Um, yeah, it would be it would be really funny if you actually if you work for the airport, you know, been, before you take them out of the tunnels, you take a, you take some sort of a fine tool to, to cut what looks like a, a the outline of a door. <laughs> you know, on the side of it, you know, and all that. And then what you do is you have, like, you know, what, have, what appears to be a nameplate or something like that. Mm -hmm. you, you make a little shadow of that, and then you have that pride off, you know, and everything like mm -hmm. that. And you see, just see if they notice it. And mm -hmm. then if they do, it's just like, oh, oh, uh, that's nothing. That's, that's yeah. right out of <laughs> yeah. a Scooby-Doo yeah, yeah, really so, buddy. Yeah, it totally I is. I never watched Scooby-Doo. Uh -huh. oh. That explains so many so things much. about you. I know, I know. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, uh, yeah. This is this is one of those stories that just it's it's so hard because there's so many things and I'm using air quotes yeah. here. There are things that are mingled together. I, it, I yeah. don't know. I, it it's leaves a funny taste in my mouth. I, I, don't, I don't know how to how to approach this one or I what totally to say agree. on it. Yeah, I don't think there's very much to say about it. Or... No, you know, I got to like say too that uh, people be more discriminating in your mystery. You know, this is just not a great. <laughs> I mean, there's so much ink spilled over this over this mystery. Or mysteries, I guess. And there's so many better mysteries to spill ink over. Dudes, you know, stop wasting your time. <laughs> I stop like wasting it. valuable ones and zeros. <laughs> I think, you know, the thing, like I said earlier, the thing is to me is that I, I do think that if each of these, I don't know, mysteries were all separated out into different places... I'd be much more willing to say, oh, like, that's nothing. Oh, what maybe. are you talking about? But the fact that they're all there, you know, one half of my brain wants to say, well, yeah, I mean, it's a little weird. On the other hand, I want to say it's not that weird. But, the, well, the, 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 the grouping of circumstances that happen to be odd together, I admit it's weird. But the problem is it then spawns so many other little urban myths around it. I mean, there's a myth, if I can't remember, it was, was it the queen or the yep. president? No, oh, yeah. It was the queen, queen of, of England, England was in Denver at some Buying time. land all around it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, go figure. They Their money is tied up in real estate. It's an airport. 
what typically goes up around airports? Businesses! Yeah. yeah so that yeah. service the airport or use the airport. Like, it totally makes sense that they'd be buying that. Mm-hmm. But, oh no, that's so that they can rush the queen there and in case of a nuclear event and stuff her in a tunnel. Yeah, there mm-hmm. was the thing about the uh, the asteroid, too. Or the, no, the comet, I mean. Um, and I was I was going to actually make notes about this, but I figured you would include it in your script, and so I didn't bother. But the comet was... <laughs> the comet was um, We'll call it Comet um, A B. Comet A, yeah, Comet A twenty three. No, A U A G. Yeah, yeah, A U A G. It was due to come to within twenty two miles of the Earth's surface, mm-hmm. according to one of the pages that was out there, on the date of uh, December, I think twenty seventh, twenty eleven, something like that. And coincidentally, President Obama was in the Denver airport that same day mm-hmm. because just in case there was an impact, mm-hmm. you know, it's like he's there's there's massive bomb shelters right there. That's another another thing is that the the underground buildings and everything. Some of them say that's just, it's, that there's this massive bomb shelter down there for mm-hmm. all the elites and everything. Yeah. But of course, the comet uh, actually didn't come any. It, it passed the Earth like months before that, mm-hmm. and it didn't come 22 miles of our surface because we all would have heard about that. Yes. It was 22 million miles yeah. away from our surface. Uh, yeah. Our surface, so there was one thing where there was some. Uh, gosh, there were coordinates that were released in conjunction with some huge conspiracy something and everybody was saying well the coordinates are exactly where the denver airport was but the coordinates were released like 70 years prior and (laughs) they actually are like 55 miles away from the airport you know it's just if there's a somebody i think it was the the pr person for the denver airport is quoted as saying if there's a conspiracy theory it's linked to the denver airport I, and i think that's true i would not actually be surprised yep. if that person or maybe persons working for the denver airport mm-hmm. are putting this stuff out it's got to be fun as hell think oh about yeah it. probably yeah. you're you're gonna work at this great new airport and then you have to wait a year and a half for your job and you're angry at it so you know i'm just gonna come up oh well i know this was yeah. weird Mm-hmm. I'm just going to put that out there. Yeah. Just keep going. It's not yeah. costing him any business. No. 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 If anything, it's gaining business. Yeah. The rest of us still have to fly through there because mm-hmm. every much. airline goes through it. Yeah. yeah. So um, if you want to read some of the links for our research or see any of the pictures that we were talking about, that will all be on our website, which is thinkingsidewayspodcast.com. Mm-hmm. You can listen to and download our episodes there. You can also listen to and download our podcast on iTunes, which is probably what you're doing. If you do, don't forget to subscribe. Also, leave us a comment and a rating. A good rating? It doesn't please. matter what kind of rating. Joe likes good ones. I don't really care. I prefer them. I just don't read them. Yeah, I don't either anymore. But we read um, the comments. People are mean. <laughs> yeah. People are nice, too, though. So yeah, people, okay. yeah, that's the hard yeah. part. I'm, gotta be a good... Oh! Yeah. So you can also stream us on literally anything that streams we're on now at this point you can connect with us on facebook we have the group and the page so find us friend us like us as joe says you can also follow us on twitter thinking sideways don't forget uh of course we've got the t-shirts and everything oh we have merch and dice t-shirts phone cases i have a phone case it's pretty awesome i think we have a nightlight we have a nightlight and a, mm-hmm. a coffee mug. And a coffee mug. Uh, you can find a link to that on our Facebook. No, I'm sorry. On our website. <laughs> it's on our website. Not on our Facebook. Well, it's above the, the donate button. It's right on, yeah, right above the donate button on the right sidebar. And then I guess the last bit is if you want to talk to us about this or any other mystery, you have suggestions, you're an expert in something that you want to contribute to the show, uh, send us an email, thinkingsidewayspodcast at gmail.com. Well, I guess with that, I'm going to fly on out of here. I knew you were uh, going to say yeah. that. So corny. You are. I'm just going to say toodaloo. I booked a ticket. Oh, God, uh, that's the worst. Th- worse than fly on <laughs> out of here. Yeah. Uh, no. You guys just say goodbye. You can't spell dedication without dead. (laughs) I think that has to be an Easter egg.